This morning, our scripture lesson is from the Old Testament and is probably one of the most familiar to us from childhood. The story is of David and Goliath, and it's a story of fear, of faith, and accomplishment. So I ask that you listen carefully as you place yourself in the reading and consider what your feelings would have been under the circumstances that the Israelites were facing. Um, the scripture reading is from the Old Testament. And now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Goth, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had greaves of bronze on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and his shield bearer went before him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy. And he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing rescuing." the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of the Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag, in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. For he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. 
This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistines' army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistines drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistines. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. The word of the Lord. The story is told of two men riding a tandem bicycle up a steep hill. <clears throat> After much effort, they finally made it to the top of the hill. The front rider said, that was a tough ride. To which the second rider replied, sure was, and if I hadn't kept the brake on, we might have slipped backwards. A challenge for sure. Our Old Testament lesson today brings up a challenge for a young boy who knew he could meet it. The very familiar story of David and Goliath that most of us have known from childhood, a story of faith and of bravery. When we hear the word power, it can bring to mind many things. We use electrical power to run everything from hair dryers to machinery, from refrigerators to heat sources, from lighting to cars. And when the power goes out, don't we know it? It often brings to a halt our best laid plans. But then there is the power that comes from natural sources, such as windmills and rich soil for growing, the power of rushing waters, strong winds and sunshine, which all can aid or destroy depending on the force. But today, we're going to focus on power that was behind one smooth stone that slay the giant. The Bible tells us that the giant Philistine, Goliath, was six cubits and a span tall, a cubit being about 18 inches and a span about six. This means he was about nine and a half feet tall. And with his armor, no doubt, he was a giant in comparison to the rest of the Philistine army. Our story tells us that the Philistines had challenged the Israelites to a battle, and the outcome would be servanthood to one side or the other. The Israelites were scared as they knew of this giant and did not know how to prepare to go into battle with him. And then young David, a shepherd boy, asks to do the duty. King Stahl, Saul is astounded and tells him that he can't possibly stand up to Goliath as he is just a boy. David proceeds to tell the king that in protecting his flock of lambs, he had killed lions and bears, and to face this giant would not be unlike it. Saul tells him that he could go but he also said, may the Lord go with you. King Saul proceeds to outfit David with, with armor which weighs him down so he cannot move. David removes it, takes his staff and five smooth stones in his pouch and heads out to slay the giant. If you were there, what would you be thinking? 
Perhaps things such as, no way, is he crazy? Surely he will not return. He's way too small and inexperienced. Why would Saul send him? What was in it for the king? And most important of all, why would he do it? David had the faith and confidence to know the strength behind his power came from God and God alone. He may have seemed bold, and maybe he did want to prove himself to be a leader. But I believe that when Saul said, go, and may the Lord go with you, that David knew exactly where the source of his strength was coming from, and therefore, in the strength of his faith, he would return safely. You and I have probably never had to literally face a human giant, but we all have had to overcome giants in our lives. We know the difficulties of life and there are often obstacles to overcome. When we are young, it may be the bully or the intimidating teacher at school. If one is very shy, as I was as a child, the whole outside world became a challenge and it brings to mind the many children whose lives have been disrupted because of an inhumane decision recently made by our government. Life circumstances present many challenges. The loss of a job, a divorce, an illness, the loss of loved ones, and difficult situations that arise when dealing with other people. And then there is always the challenge of national, natural disasters, as I think about the flooding that is happening in this country and the massive forest fires and mudslides. How does one begin to go on after such events? Like the boy David, we need to remember that God is with us and will not desert us. David was bold in his move to offer himself to do the monumental deed because he had a faith and trust in God that made him know that he could accept that challenge. Faith is what allows us to be risk takers not the ones who scale mountains or jump out of airplanes, but ordinary people like us who are brave enough to face our challenges and persevere, trusting that our God will not let us down. God does amazing work in our lives when we face our obstacles and trust that we can be brought to a better place in life. I want us to think about some people that have overcome very difficult circumstances, which made them strong and vital. <clears throat> Abraham Lincoln grew up in hopeless poverty, but persevered. Helen Keller was born to live in isolation until Annie Sullivan persevered, knowing that there was hope for that little girl. Itzhak Perlman, the amazing concert violinist, was born to parents who survived a concentration camp. And then he himself became paralyzed from the waist down when he was just four years old. Being born black in a society where Rachel racial discrimination exists, we are reminded of Booker T. Washington, Desmond Tutu, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and many, many more who have fought so hard
for justice and equality. Two women that stand out for me in this area are Harriet Tubman, who battled slavery by safely freeing many through the Underground Railroad. But one thing that I don't think is well known about her is the fact that she had permanent brain damage and health complications from the beatings she had taken from being a slave herself. And yet, she persevered. One other woman, and an idol of mine, was Marian Anderson, who was the first African-American singer to perform at the White House, and the first African-American to sing with New York's Metropolitan Opera. Marian is remembered as one of the best American contraltos, which are women with lower singing voices of all time. And the famous conductor, Arturo Toscanini, once said about her, a voice like hers is heard but once in a hundred years. Her life was not without struggles and obstacles, and yet she persevered. How does a stone-deaf composer, Beethoven, create masterpieces such as his Ninth Symphony with orchestra and choral tones that can bring intense emotion to the listener? How is it that Albert Einstein was labeled as slow and uneducatable? All these people had the courage to overcome hardships and obstacles. They had to have trusted in their creator and have known that God would be with them. Without faith, many would simply have given up. For me, there is no other explanation for why people are able to go against all odds and do good in this world or to share the amazing gifts that they have been given. It has to come from God within them. I believe that it is when we face obstacles that we realize that we are not equipped to do it alone. It is then that God can and does work many things in us and through us to overcome them. This God is ready and waiting and alongside each and every one of us. We must face our difficulties because no one can do it for us. But we can know that our God is greater than any giant we may face. It was not the power of the one smooth stone that killed Goliath. It was God's power working through David's faith in God that slayed the giant. Blessed may it be. Amen.